tutorial we're going to look at the basics of input and output specifically how we can get what some how we can get something the user typed in the console window into our program and then how we can display it again so in the visual studio start page under new project click create new project make sure that visual basic windows classic desktop is selected on the left and console app is selected in the middle of your screen now in the name field we just want to change it to a meaningful name for this project so I'm going to call it input output and then click OK. Now all of our code is going to be written inside sub main in sub. Again the pressing enter in there just to create a little bit of white space. Um, it'll be ignored by the Visual Basic compiler when you run your program. It's just to help us with our readability. So the first thing we need to do is to create a container called a variable that's going to store whatever we type. So to do that, we create a variable with a declaration. We go dim, give it a name that we want. In this case, it is name as string and its starting value is going to be empty. There's a tutorial later in this video series that covers more about variables. So don't worry if this doesn't make too much sense at this stage. Then we want to get some user, uh, get something from the user. But first of all, we need to prompt them uh, to tell them what to do. So the way we do that is to output a little message to the screen. Console.write and in parentheses and in speech marks enter your name. Noticing that I am hard coding that little um, space after the colon there. If we don't do it, the computer won't put it in. Next, we need to get user input. What I'm writing in green here is just a comment. Um, again, there's another tutorial that covers more about comments. So to get user input, we need to take the variable that we want to store that input. Then we want to assign it, or put the equal sign, whatever is read from the keyboard. And for that, it's console.readline. Now we want to output that. So to output the user input, we're going to go console.write like we did for the prompt with enter your name but this time instead of some hard-coded text which is up here in speech marks we're going to put whatever contents are stored in this variable called name which can change every single time we run the program so I'm going to put name in there noticing that I do not put speech marks around it it's a variable it's a container that stores could store something different every time we run the program Whereas up here it's hard-coded text, it remains the same each time we run our code and hard-coded text must have speech marks around it, around it. Variables never have speech marks around them. And finally, we just want that line of code, console.readkey, that's going to prevent the um, console window from disappearing on us as soon as the rest of the code has finished executing. So we go up and press start or hit F5 on your keyboard. And first of all, we're presented with enter your name. OK, Bob. Press enter and Bob is output. So we compare it with the code. This is all behind the scenes, creating a variable or a container to store the user input. We display a little message to the user telling them what to do. It's always handy to be polite to your user. Then we read whatever they typed up here in the console window and we assign it to a variable, in this case name, and then we output that value of the variable once again. In the next tutorial we'll look at how we can extend this basic input output program.